welcome back to my channel. It is my birthday. Well, when you're seeing this, it's not my birthday anymore, but I did do this eye look because I think we're gonna go grab like some sushi, very casual. I don't know what it is. It's like the older I get, the less I want people to fuss about the fact that it's my birthday. I think it's so fun when people plan like birthday parties and stuff, but I just like, I, I think it's sweet, like, but I also like hate like drawing attention to myself. It's really weird. So let me know if you guys feel that way in the comments because if somebody could relate to that feeling, I would really like to know. It's not like I'm like depressed about getting older, but yeah, it's weird, right? Isn't it weird? I don't know. Tell me if you think it's weird. Anyway, one of our cats has this sore eye and for some reason my husband got so worried today that he called a vet and they could get him in at like 7 p.m on Saturday, which I think is amazing, but that's where he is. And since I did my makeup, I've decided, hey, let's not let any makeup go to waste and I should film a video because it's always fun when I can have a different look in a video. With Vlogmas, I definitely did a lot of like batch filming, so you will definitely see the same look repeated through multiple videos, but I don't think you guys mind that. Um, it just works with my schedule because I don't like to film daily. I don't like to film after work because I feel so crusty after a whole day of work and I'm definitely not getting up like an hour early every morning to film YouTube videos. But anyway, today I just wanted to film this video really quick. It's nothing too fancy. I wanted to grab all the products, but I'm kind of talking about the same brands over and over in a few of these videos, so you guys should have pretty much seen these products in my collection. It's definitely stuff that I have, but in 2018, I think, I was pretty intense, and I had a list of like, here's the brands I want to try, da 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 da, and whether I tried them and stuff like that, and I don't know, I think I went so ham in 2018. 2019, I wasn't as stressed about trying, or not stressed, but I wasn't as intentional about trying brands I was more like let's see what happens you know and I just bought whatever I wanted to buy so I had a list on my phone actually that I found which was really funny and I only had four things on there because I probably abandoned this list at the start of 2019 when I started making it and so I put on there Cosette eyeshadows because makeup struggles would rave about Cosette shadows but they're kind of spendy so I never actually ended up buying them, but I check up on them every once in a while to see if they have a good sale or something. I'd definitely be intrigued to try them, but I just never end up doing that because every time I look on their site, it seems like it's a little bit more pricey. And then I had Nabla Singles on there, which I haven't actually bought any of Nabla Singles, but they're on my list because of Georgia Harris because she got some, I think, in 2018 and she raves about those singles, and so I was really, really curious to try them. But now I've kind of gotten into Nabla's, like those highlighters, I'm obsessed with them. I'm wearing one of them today on my face. And I actually just recently purchased the Dreamy 2 palette when it came to Ulta, so I'm so happy that they are at Ulta now. So although I didn't get to try their singles, I am definitely dabbling with the brand. I know Angelica loves them and has a video. I think she just filmed a video of ranking all of their palettes that they have out and I'm excited to get the Dreamy 2. Of course Ulta's shipping is notoriously slow so I'm expecting that sometime in the new year. Okay so the next brand I had was Smith Brushes and I actually did try one of their brushes. I got the large um, flat shader brush and it's really nice. The Smith brushes, the flat brushes, have like a pointed arrow tip, which I think is fantastic because they fit right on the inner corner of your eye, which makes it really fun to apply like a shimmer shadow with them. So I would love to purchase more, but they're kind of like, they're not like overly pricey, but they're still like in that $20 range where I can't just like buy a bunch of them. So I haven't bought any more, but I have tried the one brush. And then Sonia G brushes, I did end up buying their eye brush set that they sell on Beautylish and I love my Sonia G brushes, so I would love to get more. And her Sky Blue set, or whatever that's called, the limited edition set that she just launched for the holidays, is on my makeup wish list. I missed that launch 
when it happened and I deeply regret it, but it sold out so fast. So I'm hoping I'll be able to grab them on the restock. So those are the four brands that I had on my list to try and kind of an update of whether I tried them or not. And then since I started, you know, looking at this list, I also wanted to mention some brands that I hadn't planned to try, but did end up trying in 2019. So I have a few of those listed here on my phone. And the first brand was Terra Moon. And I recommend you guys trying Terra Moon in 2020 as well. But I have been loving their chameleon shadows. If you guys have followed me at all this past month, you guys would see me talking about them, putting them in my inner corner. I'm obsessed. And yeah, I just think it's such a fun collection. Those eight eyeshadows are so unique and just so perfectly suited for my skin tone. I don't know, I could just go on about them. They're fabulous, I love the pigmentation. I don't know, I just think they're so different for my collection. I mean, I do have the Cleonaut stained glass shadows as well, and I love those as well, but I just love the formula and they're so like finely milled, I love that. Whereas the Cleonaut ones can be a little chunky. So it just depends on your preference, but. I, I'm obsessed with Terra Moon, um, and I hope to try more from them in 2020. So the next brand I got to try was Adept Cosmetics, and I got some shadows sent to me from Adept. So first I saw a lot of people getting them in PR, and Hannah Louise Poston was swatching the shimmer shades, and I was like, oh my god, those foil shadows look amazing. And so I bought a little bundle, because on her site you can do... A little bundle and I think you get like five for 15 something like that I'm not a hundred percent sure but go check out her website and I was shopping and I bought six shadows and then she reached out to me and sent me a bunch more which I'm so appreciative of just because it's always nice to try a few more things and I just fell in love with her formula so I am so happy that I got to try adept in 2019 and then Amy Hearts Beauty, I started receiving PR from them. They're the first brand that sent me PR. And it's been so great to see their journey, honestly. I mean, I haven't known about them for as long as Amy Loves Makeup has, I don't think. But just seeing them come from their first palette to now their collab palette, the Alma palette with Amy Loves Makeup, has been amazing. Like, one day I was literally just sitting there, like, thinking about it and seeing the Alma palette on Trend Mood, seeing all these YouTubers talking about Amy Hart's beauty and Amy Love's makeup's collab has just made me so happy for our little beauty community because they're doing such big things and it's a woman-owned, person-of-color-owned brand and she's such a hustler and seeing both of these women, Amy has such a great work ethic. Like, I could go on about both of them forever, but I'm so pump that I caught I kind of got to be there at the start which is pretty rare these days I mean a lot of brands are already established or they have like a bunch of influencers already working with them so it was really really nice of them to include me on their PR list and I got their Galaxy Phenom palette um, the beach palette they did for the summer they have a bunch of different collections and then to see Amy Hart's Beauty's collab palette with them um, or Amy Loves Beauty's collab palette with them just made me so happy and I cannot wait to see what they do in 2020 because that one woman show killed it on actually producing the palette that Amy had envisioned which I think is amazing so I could continue to gush about those two but I'm so happy again I got to try the brand in 2019. The next brand I wanted to mention is Alter Ego and this brand I feel like I don't know how they found me. It's definitely one of those tactics because it definitely is like shop hush. Um, I remember when I was much smaller, much smaller, I'm still small, but smaller, um, I would see the shop hush, you know, PR and everyone's like, oh my gosh, these palettes are amazing. And I think I ended up buying one, but I never even used it because I think by the time I got around to it, they were already off the scene. But I like Alter Ego. I like their stuff. I think it's a great price point. Do I necessarily think they are the same as the dupes? Not always. Or the palettes that they're duping? Not always. But I think you can still get the vibe. And I think that's okay because I always preface it by saying, you know, just because I want to spend a hundred and something dollars 
on an eyeshadow palette doesn't mean everyone else does. And I like that we have variety in the community so people can have different options. So that's kind of cool. Oh, by the way, that little cat, that little cactus, that little orchid back there, um, my parents sent it to me for my birthday. Isn't it cute? So hopefully I won't kill it. If you guys have any orchid care advice, leave it down in the comments for me. So the next brand I got to try, and I'm so glad I got to try this brand, is of course Kaleidos. And I mean, I could just go on and on about them, but their eyeshadow palettes, their new highlighters, they're not really new, but they feel like they're new. Um, their new lipsticks, liquid lipsticks, glosses, their eye brushes, like they really killed it in 2019. And I was so happy to get on their PR list towards the middle of the year. And I've just been enjoying everything they've come out with. I'm so happy that I don't have anything bad to say about that brand because definitely rooting for them. And they are an American Asian company. So their stuff ships from China, but I've honestly never experienced any issues. I know people are a little more skeptical um, for brands that are based in other countries, but I haven't had a problem with them. So based off of my experience, I'm recommending them to you guys. And again, so happy I got to talk to them and I got to be a part of their year and try some of their products. So, so excited about that. So number 10 is Be Perfect and I just bought their Carnival XL Pro palette and I was so excited about this palette because so many people had raved about the original one that came out and so I picked it up and I bought it from Beauty Bay I believe I was stocking Beauty Bay until it um, was available to purchase on Beauty Bay and I haven't really used it I used it one time and it's kind of been gathering dust in my makeup collection over there so I do need to use it in 2020 and kind of make up my mind about the brand uh, but technically it is a new brand to me and I have used the palette one time and honestly just from that one use I wasn't very blown away uh, but I will go back to it and give you guys my thoughts once I have some formulated but I did want to include them in this video. The next brand I tried is Lunar Beauty and you guys know the story walked into the Morphe store, bought their highlighter, and then I bought the Strawberry Dreams and the, um, what is this palette called? The Moonspell palette um, for their Halloween collection. And I've really been enjoying the brand, so I'm very excited to see what they come out with next. And yeah, just a great formula, um, great color stories. I don't think they had the best start um, when they first launched, but I feel like they've gotten better and that's all we can hope for in the makeup community is seeing people grow and you know their aesthetics change and always striving for the next level. Um, so the next brand is Shop Missé and really the only thing I Really, really tried are those sponges. I think there should be two back there, but I've been like obsessed with the Pawpaw sponges. So affordable, literally replaced every other sponge in my collection. I will never, I will never buy a beauty blender again. I don't feel the need to. These ones are better in my opinion. They're very soft. They work well. Um, you can, you know, not feel as guilty about tossing a sponge um, because they don't cost $20. I think they cost like $1.55. And most of the time you can get them on sale. They also have a value pack, so there's great ways to purchase them. If there's one thing you try from this list, is it should be the Shop Missé sponges because you'll actually save money doing that, and that makes me feel really good recommending you guys something like that. So that is my advice on that. And then the last brand I tried was Kaja, and I didn't try a ton, I just tried a bento box. And I actually bought it as like a souvenir when I was traveling in New York in October of 2019. And I just thought, hey, I'm in New York. I want to remember this, blah, 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 blah. It's, yeah. And I bought a bento box and they are beautiful and shimmery and glittery and delicious. I didn't buy the ones with the matte shades. I bought one that was all shimmers because I thought I could use it as topper shades. And it's so tiny and fun if you want to like travel with it or something like that or you have friends that are very like into minimal they would love something like that because it's so small and compact so I like the vibe I would like to try more from them but it's not something that's like immediately like top priority on my list of things to do so okay guys so that is everything for the brands I wanted to try 
in 2019 and what I actually ended up trying. I thought this was a little bit of a spin because there are some brands that, like I said, I kind of went into it without really giving myself clear guidelines of like what I wanted to try and more of just like if I find something I like it I'll buy it if it's new to me it'll be a new brand to try and I really liked being able to do that so yeah we'll have to see what 2020 brings I am working on a list of brands I do want to try in 2020 but again I'm gonna try and keep it really short and sweet because I think that way you are more open to trying whatever new brand might come our way versus if you have a list then you're like oh shit like okay I have this list should I stick to my list you know it, it gets a little confusing so that's what's worked for me in 2019 and I hope you guys enjoyed this video I will see you in my next video soon bye guys <music>